Astrid. Woo! Hi, my name's Astrid, and in my veins flows different kinds of blood. Half German, half French, and one-eighth Romanian blood. So as you see, I'm overflowing. <laughs> Maybe this is the reason why I have a high emotional fluctuation curve. Although my mood swings seems also related to how hungry I am. One moment I am happy, optimistic, and full of joie de vivre. And the next one I'm hungry and I get grumpy, annoyed, and utterly frustrated by everything. Don't worry, I just had a snack. <laughs> when I'm out with my husband Dirk and I say, sweetheart, aren't you getting hungry too? He knows. Uh oh. In a few minutes, my sweet, overflowing wife is going to start nagging me unbearably. He always carries a power bar for me, just in case. <laughs> it's a particularly bad idea for me to go shopping when I'm hungry. I would end up putting way too much food into my shopping trolley, especially naughty food. Three times the normal French amount of chocolate, eight German baguettes, a whole wheel of hearty camembert. <laughs> Yet there is a worse idea than going shopping hungry, that is shopping after reading a book about the impact of food on climate change. <laughs> my, brain <laughs> my brain is designed to quickly put aside this type of depressing information no worries, your brain too. <laughs> this is the hypnotizing thing. Ooh, your brain will forget all of the depressing thing I'm about to say <laughs> and will just remember the jokes. <laughs> So it's Saturday morning again. I'm happy, optimistic, and full of joie de vivre. I set off in my car to go shopping for food. And as soon as I enter the supermarket, I see the stands with vegetables and fruits, mostly filled with pesticides. And all of my reading hits me. So here's the frustrating thing. It seems like when we try to fix one problem, we make another problem worse. So take me as an example. I used to buy this pesticide, vegetables, and fruit stuff. And then I changed for the organic version in the supermarket, well packed in plastic and hauled half around the world. <laughs> then I found a farmer's basket home delivered. Seasonal, regional, organic, unpacked, perfect except that the farmer has to drive all around the place. The only really sustainable solution <laughs> would be to get divorced to Dirk and to marry the farmer. <laughs> Which obviously is not an option. <laughs> cold shelves with meat and dairy products and here my emotions fall rock bottom on my Franco-German-Romanian emotional fluctuation curve. I never understood German fondness for sausages and salami. I mean, they increase the risks for colorectal and pancreatic cancer by 65%. <laughs> 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 
They cause neurological diseases like Alzheimer and obesity. I mean, I don't care about people's grocery and health choices. I mean, their business is their business, right? Their health is their business. Except for Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they want to give up on sharp intellectuals and hot bodies, I don't mind. <laughs> but as soon as those grocery choices are not only impacting their health, but actually my family's future, it becomes my business too. <laughs> Soy and corn industrial culture farming for animal food is responsible um, is <laughs> is exhausting agricultural land reserves and groundwater reserves, is responsible for deforestation and the destruction of biodiversity. Industrial animal farming is a huge contributor to climate change, to the rise of temperatures, and ultimately to the rise of the sea level. Even the algae plagues on the shorelines are due to, the in, to, to pig manure, of Deutsche Gülle. <laughs> to say it in a, another way, if you eat meat today, tomorrow you ruin my summer vacation on the Atlantic coast. <laughs> this is why I have a hard time trying to ban frozen salami pizza as the preferred shortcut emergency solution at home. So Dirk may remember my name when we are retired and sunbathing on the beaches in France. <laughs> I move on in the supermarket, my trolley still empty. And I arrive at other shelves and I see customers putting in sugary sodas, frozen cookies, and ready meals in their basket and I start getting really grumpy. You know when you're like both hungry and having read a book about the impact of our food on climate change. <laughs> Sugar is also responsible for destroying forests, biodiversity, and exhausting groundwater reserves. So ultimately, we will end up with half of the world craving for water just for us to be able to drink our Coke and eat a burger. <laughs> Which is insane. I try to console myself with a good bottle of French wine. <laughs> and here, the evidence of my reading hits me again. Wine has pesticides residues 5,800 times higher than the permitted dose in tap water. <laughs> Which is particularly devastating. So, I'm rock bottom, I'm devastated. My moods are way on the floor. I decide to do something which makes me happy again. That is I forgot something very important. <laughs> yeah, we have to move back to that moment. <laughs> When I said that we would have to renounce the frozen salami pizza at home, and um, I was talking to Dirk about that solution, and he looked at me and said, well, hon, if you want me to renounce German salami, you have to be consistent and renounce French camembert, too. Naughty silence. <laughs> if everybody was renouncing to eat meat for only once a day, one day per week, that would spare over nine million tons of CO2 per year, 
which is nice. But who the heck wants to feel deprived? Nobody. So here was my brilliant idea. I said, hey honey, let's just turn it around. Let's have a cheat day once a week. Not with sex. <laughs> cheat day with meat and cheese. We would spare 40, 40, 54 million tons of CO2 per year and everybody will love it because everybody likes to cheat. <laughs> Let's have our cheat day, baby. <laughs> Let's go for a meet and be fee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's eat all the good things and the bad things that can be. Let's have a cheat day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, after having finished the thing with the meat and the cheese and everything, and after having figured out that sugar is not a better thing to the world <laughs> than the industrial animal farming, and after having recognized that French wine is definitely not going to be able to console me, because if I would pour it on the lawn, all spiders would have to run in my house for safety, <laughs> I take my car, because there I can put on the music on loud and drive fast and furious and feel better again. And I decide to emit another 17 kilometers of CO2 to get to that unpacked organic store <laughs> and fill nice little glass containers with beautiful products from those shelves. And I start to feel happy, optimistic, and full of joie de vivre again. And on my way home, I picture the wonderful, healthy, organic, vegetarian menu I will cook lovingly only to figure out that my starving family has treated herself to emergency salami pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and it was irritatingly delicious. <laughs> Thank you and good night.